Hello and welcome to the Sociology Staff Room. You'll see, I don't know how you're looking at the screen, on your right hand side, your left hand side, Duncan. And he's not going to be behind the screen today, he's going to be <laughs> our guest. Um, we're going to be talking about strong foundations. So first of all, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come and speak to us. Oh, that's quite all right. Thanks for, thanks for asking me, Katie. <laughs> well, you are the, the guru, I sometimes refer to you as the guru of sociology, just because um, obviously the great work you do for uh, Chew to Chew, but also I think I obviously come to you for lots of advice regarding sociology as well, so it's important to have you on as a guest as well. So I understand that we're going to be doing some um, workshops uh, soon, Strong Foundations. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Absolutely. So, yeah, if those don't know, we do two sets of workshops through the year for students these are based in cinemas um and we come around different parts of the country we do um a, a larger sort of tour in the spring which is called grey booster i'm sure we'll talk about that in the future um but the one pre-christmas is called strong foundations um and the aim really it's it's, it's a different workshop totally different different um different activities different resources but it's it's to get year 13s who, you know, are still a little way off exams and, th and revision and things like that. It's, um, uh, and to think, you know, this, there's a time, there's, there's plenty of time to work on stuff there. There's still plenty of time before the exams. So, um, we look at skills, um, yeah, kind of strong foundations, if you like, the foundational skills, you know, how do you do application, you know, how can you demonstrate analysis and evaluation and really improve those um and we do look back on year 12 and we do some you know so knowledge there's another one of those skills of course knowledge and understanding we do we do uh some key revision of um of year 12 content as well and it's a really nice day out um so the we we do them at cinemas um you know generally in a in a shopping center or a you know or a multiplex cinema area um we do from about 10 till about three ish or so the really okay. middle of the day um and you know while they're there it's um you know there's intensive uh, sociological work quite fast paced um lots of stuff happening on the big screen make best use of the big cinema screen um but it's also an opportunity to to have a have a trip out meet other <laughs> meet other sociology students hear what they know and hear what they say you know beyond what the people in your classroom do often it's just nice to hear um someone else saying the same as your teacher that's always a <laughs> that's always a nice thing as well to get that that reinforcement um and you know th there's stuff to take away from it and think well i've got i've got a few months you know still got a few months to work to work on that um but also help for you know mocks that are likely to come up shortly after that as well so there's it's a it's a cracking day out i always think <laughs> yeah. I, I, I I do really really enjoy yeah. it, and I, I know that the teachers get a lot out of it because obviously they can then also there's like that lunch break and they can sort of speak to other teachers as well potentially Absolutely. and make it's particularly if you're a sole teacher as well, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's a good opportunity to meet other sociology teachers, <clears throat> have a chat with us um, as the presenters. Um, then also, um, you know, pick up some some ideas as well. You know, we use methods in the in the session which could be replicated in the in the classroom um so so yeah i, I definitely think it's of, of of value for teachers as well um and you can you know either teachers can bring their whole group along or students can book on as individuals um or you could perhaps think well maybe this will be useful for a few for some of my students you, know, you could think well maybe this is something to push some who you feel need a bit more, a bit more support. Um, but yeah, so there's there's various ways that you could use it as a resource. So in terms of uh, strong foundations in November, we are coming to. I hope I get this right now off the top of my head. Um, Put you on the spot. I should have. I should really have had a list. In fact, I might even have an edit point here while I <laughs> I'll find a list. May as well get it right. Might we? Hang on a sec. Um, I hope I remember to edit this. I just have really long <laughs> silence. Um, really long, awkward silence now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we are coming to Leeds, Birmingham, Manchester and London. 
so the first sessions in Leeds that's on the 24th of November um, and then um, we have got um, two two London uh, dates so we'll do both the Westfields basically um, and then after that Birmingham and um, finishing in Manchester on the uh, 1st of December so it's kind of a, a week and a bit um, in November and it, it's it's good for us as well we like to come around and uh, meet meet the meet the teachers meet the students um, get some feedback in terms of the other resources that we produce and what's what teachers are wanting what students are wanting um, and we spend you know a good bit of time <coughs> designing the day to very much meet the needs of meet the needs of students um, at this point in their course um, occasionally people bring their year 12s along um, and you know you you can do um, it's you know it is aimed at aimed at year 13s but you know particularly perhaps your bright year 12s it's possible it's a little early in the year really isn't it i suppose but you know they could i'm sure they they, they would get uh, get stuff out of it um but it might be worth saving it for the saving it for the following year bringing them the next year um it is uh aqa focused um the grade booster is more focused on assessment so it's a little more um you know makes it's it's, it's a bit it's a, it's a sort of more significant that yeah there, there would be no point coming if you're doing another another board i guess you you could think about it for the strong foundations one you know where we look at exam style questions they are aqa style questions but there's less of that in strong foundations than, than grade booster and the the foundational skills obviously are similar but you'd want to just say other other sort of knowledge topics we're going to be looking at the same we mostly talk about the core ones oh, that's a question i was going to ask yeah. you how if you're sitting there and you're thinking to yourself i'm mm. a teacher but i teach the minority subjects is it worth mm. me coming oh definitely so we mostly focus on the core topics by that i mean the ones that, you, that everyone does so when i say we do revision of year 12 it's mostly education and research methods yeah um that's not to say we won't mention families or cultural identity or whatever but th that we tend to have kind of maybe extension activities or activities where you know different groups in the in the in the, in the cinema will be doing slightly different things or looking at slightly different questions so we will uh consider some of the some of the optional topics but um but no it is primarily focused on the on the core ones that everyone does and then applying the skills you know beyond that um same in same in the spring so you know we'll spend more time on crime and deviance family oh, sorry crime and deviance education theory and methods than we will on <coughs> say for example families and beliefs or whatever you might be doing but that's not to say we won't do anything on them we do we also put some materials on something called the hub um for the november so for strong foundations there's um basically an att attendant website that has some extra resources um, and there's also a booklet that has some uh, a range of resources in there as well um, and some QR codes to take you to some digital stuff um, and you know there some of the extension activities you know we apply to some of the more um, some, some of the optional topics but no there won't be like periods where we're spending a long time talking about families and you your students will be thinking oh well this isn't this doesn't apply to me um, no so so that We've we designed it specifically to to avoid that that well, risk, if you like. Yeah, um, that's good news. That's good news. Yeah. I was another quick question while you've got us on here, and I'm thinking about sort of those fundamental skills. I'm putting you on the spot now, Duncan. Um, I know there was a debate quickly, just so we having a, a like a sort of a taster, yeah. a sample of what we would get. <laughs> um, I really might not even know what I'm going to ask you. I don't know. But um, the, the teachers, the students, often and teachers, I think we we sometimes get confused around the word evaluation and analysis um, or there might be with students like what's the difference between evaluation you know yeah. good evaluation good analysis and sometimes you know it's particularly the 10 markers it's like well, what am i supposed to be doing yeah. just i know you're one person one perspective but it's just a, to give a bit of a, and just yeah. and just get a taster really of what we might be mm. discussing as we, as obviously says yeah. strong foundations is about developing those skills mm. Yeah. So the first thing I'd say is that there is quite a lot of overlap between all of the skills. Okay. 
And that's one of the reasons why things are marked holistically. Um, and it's it's not like a set of, you know, here's your AOM. It, the way the it's thought about isn't like it's three, three or four sets of marks, if you like. Um, because when you think about, say, knowledge, you know, you show your knowledge and understanding, but some of the ways you demonstrate that knowledge and understanding might be applying, <laughs> applying some knowledge. So there's a huge overlap between application and knowledge. Um, there's, and then part of that demonstrating that knowledge will be through explaining it well, which is the key point of analysis. Really, is like a you know a, a detailed explanation um, and and development. Um, so so there are overlaps, and I would say, for example, that. Um, you know, good evaluation can form part of good analysis and that kind of thing. So they're, they're, they're not totally distinct, unique things. But if we were just going to, focusing on evaluation and analysis, if we're just going to sort what do we mean by them? What are we looking for? Analysis, I would say, is looking for a really clear, detailed explanation of your point, of the point that you've made. To analyse it is going to really explain it. Um, and I think often you think about that in terms of like a process, getting from a to b if you like from the uh you know so uh, you know you can demonstrate your knowledge and say that um material deprivation can impact um uh, educational achievement by social class you know that's a that's your point it's a clear bit of knowledge you might say who said it and then be a bit more knowledge and a bit of application you know, this was shown by douglas or whatever but you're in now at the moment that's still being descriptive yeah this yeah, you know, this happens and this person said it happened. Yeah, you know, the analysis comes in really explaining it, you know, a detailed explanation. Why does that why does that cause cause that? Okay. Um and if you sometimes your teacher might say, Oh, this is quite descriptive, you know, that's what they mean. They might say you just you're just sort of stating things, you're not really explaining them sociologically. And and similarly things can get quite list like, you know, because you learn so many names and so many things, you know, you could end up yeah, you know, Douglas said this, but then also did so and so else, and so did somebody else. And all good knowledge, yeah, but 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 it, and, and you know, potentially good application. But you know, what does it mean? And then also another part of analysis could be you could start to tease out a few differences. You know, if you got a few different studies saying similar things, there's not really any point listing them if they said exactly the same thing, and it's actually unlikely that they did say exactly the same thing. So what you you know, part of your analysis might be, yeah, well, this added to that by making this point or this was a bit different because of this although they agreed about something else and there you're starting to get into something that's slightly closer to evaluation particularly where you start saying that this one is better than that one or you agree with that one one that one evaluation is more of a judgment um yeah that is what that's what evaluation evaluation means um so we often think about it and it's fine to as kind of however yeah, because that is part of you making a judgment. You're saying a criticism of it, whatever. But it doesn't have to be a however point. You know, you could be pointing out why it's a good point. Yeah, yeah. We just mentioned that. Yeah, you know, maybe other people said it. Well, that can be part of an evaluation. This has been, you know, corroborated, or other people have found the same thing. Other studies have reached similar conclusions. So that's a strength of the point. Um, it could be. Um, you know, a limitation rather than a full-on criticism. You know, it's 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 good, but it doesn't explain everything. It doesn't take us to. You know, there's some things it doesn't explain. Um, it could be that you provide some evidence either for or against it, and that kind of thing. So there there are various ways that you can evaluate. Now you asked about, for example, ten markers because it gets a little bit complicated when you look at the mark schemes in. <clears> the, <throat> One of the 10 markers mentions evaluation. I think it says analysis and or mm. evaluation. The other one just mentions analysis. And as I said, it, you know, I, this is just my view, but I tend to suggest not getting too too kind of concerned about that because there are these overlaps between the skills. Um, what you probably want to avoid, particularly in that outline and explain one where it doesn't mention evaluation, is you probably want to avoid an extended kind of however point or whatever basically saying the other side of the argument um because you could look at that and think well that's that's not answering the question you could like sort of try and fight back fight argue back and say well i think i am still answering the question i'm just saying <laughs> i'm saying but if you're asked say for example two two weaknesses of of um 
two weaknesses of using questionnaires in sociological research or whatever you don't want to spend half your answer talking about two strengths because that's not what that's not what you've been mm. asked for so that's what you want to try and avoid so if, if that's kind of in your mind as being that's how i evaluate i must about weaknesses of <laughs> of um of a uh, of this research method i evaluate i evaluate it with strengths avoid that in your (laughs) outline and explain type question if you know we're talking about that kind of limitations or whatever but that's fine you know you could say well you know this is a strength but only so far or to to what extent is this a strength whatever that 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 that, that'd be okay depending on what the question was sorry i might i might have mixed my strengths and weaknesses up there but so you know but say say you're asked for two strengths you might say well to what extent is this a strength or whatever there but a little bit of that would be fine but you want to primarily focused on the specific thing you've been asked for truth is you do want that really for your other one as well <laughs> but, but, but but because the evaluation is explicitly mentioned in the uh, in the mark scheme you would be credited for you know a however type point in that one but for the most part i'd probably think you want to you want to answer them quite similarly yeah the the actual answers would look quite quite similar two paragraphs um with plenty of analysis in because that's really what they're really what they're after and then there's there's a difference in terms of the application between those uh, between those different types of 10 markers as well but if i'm not gonna say all of that now you'll have to come to the uh, <laughs> come, <laughs> no, <laughs> come to the workshop well, for that that's one, one of the things and i think that's the skills has refining of those skills i think yeah you know the year 12 students will have a breadth of knowledge already at this stage and have a good sort of foundation of, of skills. And I think the benefit of the, the Grey Bridge is sort of a, um, a, I suppose, supporting what teachers are already doing in the classroom and sort of catalyzing some of those skills to the next stage, mm. really. Um, but definitely just supporting what teachers already doing a, across the yeah. country right now. Um, just what, before you go, um, how do they become if okay. they want to put their students on? Yeah, so. Um... All the information's on the website. So if you go to tutorstudio.net, go to the sociology bit. I think there's it. It's front and front and central at the moment about the workshops, um, and it gives you information about how to book on there. You can phone the office as well at tutorstudio and uh, talk to talk to the people in the office, and they'll help you uh, book it. Um, individuals can also book on the website. So there's a there's a you know you can just do it online. So. Oh, yeah. perfect. So that's just um, a bit of a taster there of what we're going to find out, a little bit more about developing those skills. And I mean, obviously you did, I'm not saying you did lots of talking, but you did a lot of explanation there. But actually in the reality, the the, uh, the students will be actually doing all the work there and it's just them. Yeah, yeah. There's but, not, it's not lecture style in any No, no. And that, I mean, that's, that's another thing, I suppose, is what what's, you know, people are sort of thinking, what was, what's it going to be like? It mm. isn't going to be, you know, a couple of people talk talking for it's not a presentation talk. of duncan uh, <laughs> no, no no it isn't and, and it isn't a, there isn't a lot of talking um there is some obviously you know, explain an activity or whatever but it it's very much um you know learning it through through activities and checking and seeing what you already know um see what students already know so um yeah it isn't a lecture style um event um students are uh, being asked to get involved throughout from the very beginning and and throughout um and there isn't really any point where they're meant to just be sitting and listening to um me or anyone else <laughs> talk at length about 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 anything which you know and I, I think it's always worth being aware of that before they go um mm. i think for you know my the feedback from that has always been overwhelmingly positive i think that's what one of the things people really enjoy and like about the event but um you know sometimes people's expectations might be different they might think oh this is going to be because there are events like that aren't there where you go and hear a hear an expert talk talk about um a topic so say you know we're doing we do a the last session's very much focused on education um and uh you know you might go to a session where like a, a specialist in sociology or education talks for talks for 40 minutes or whatever about that and that might be what you know that, and there's there's value in that as well but that isn't what this that's, that isn't what this is it'll be question after question activity after activity quick fire um what do On you know toes. Yeah. yeah what do we know what don't we know and where can we move forward because there's plenty yeah. of time as well to sort of think well actually yeah i don't i, I might need to develop for example my evaluational skills or my, yeah. my knowledge in that there's enough time for yeah. to act upon that as well so yeah so it might yeah. be for example what skills being 
use here or what's wrong with this you know that that kind of thing rather than here's me tell you at great length what mm. what uh what application means or whatever I'll be, yeah. I'll be asking you what does application mean <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely not the teachers obviously the students not the teachers the students, <laughs> Although, sorry, the, sorry. The, te- the students the teachers do I do find the teachers like to engage it as well don't they absolutely like, they, yeah they get involved yeah. as well so and I think yeah. you know it, it's I mean, encourage that. you know yeah so it's yeah. good it's good fun so hopefully we'll see lots of people at or see, we'll see people at different events uh, over yeah. the next couple of weeks and I months. hope so uh, but yeah yeah it'd be lovely to see people and uh uh, come and say hello if you if you heard the uh, podcast or saw us on YouTube, whatever. So I'm here because of that. Be useful. To <laughs> but go out, be good to know. Go yeah, you could be like, who's who's here because of <laughs> who's here because of the sociologist stuff? No one. No one. No one. Oh, that'd be good. Oh, well, thanks for the time, Duncan. And uh, oh, that's all right. Idea what to do and you know where to go and obviously you'll find out more when you come to the event. So that's amazing. Definitely. All right, thanks, Katie. All right, see you later, (laughs) Duncan. See you, bye, bye.